In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to our service this morning on this, the third Sunday of Trinity, and also Father's Day. It's the day that we try and spend or think about our fathers, or those who, those who fathered us in our, in our own lives. And now let us sing our first hymn. Gather together as God's family, let us ask forgiveness from our Heavenly Father, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we sing the glory.
So let us pray. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. As we work together with Christ, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honour and dishonour, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians, our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. Alleluia, alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. When evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great gale arose and the waves beat into the boat, so the boat was already being, already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. And now I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's Gospel reading tells us to put our trust in God. There are times where our own lives go through gales and storms and troublous times. There are times where we wonder why God is silent. But we should be reassured that God will never leave us. God will never leave us alone to perish. The Gospel reading, we hear that the the, the, the disciples were there, they, they pestered Jesus, they woke him up. 
And there are times where we pray and we ask and we ask and we ask. And at the right time, God interacts. They left the crowd behind, but some followed on boats. What faith they must they have had, because, you know, this storm must have been brewing. But they went with Jesus. And then, at that time, when things were looking really bad, they, they asked Jesus to help, just as we pray in times of difficulty with prayers of intercession, private prayer. Throughout this whole pandemic, which hopefully we are coming towards the end of the crisis moment of it, we have offered prayers time and time again for it. For those who are suffering from it, those whose lives are affected by it, those who are working through it, those who are assisting us, those who are working with the vaccine when we didn't have a vaccine, for those who have been administering the vaccine. And now we give thanks that so many people have received their second dose of the vaccine. It's now open to all adults. And I heard on the radio this week that by the beginning or mid-September, everybody should be vaccinated. What marvellous news. And let us remember to give thanks to God for that. But it's in times of trouble we turn to God. And people who don't go to church, people who would say, oh, we're not particularly religious, at times of need, they'll pray. There are people who want prayer said at a funeral, whether they go to church or not. They want that prayer for them. I say to, I say to, to families, look, you know, I tend to do it where we have a prayer for, give thanks for the life of the person who's died. We give prayers for those who mourn and then we say the Lord's Prayer. We also then have a prayer at the commendation and committal. And we have a prayer of blessing at the end. These are important parts. It's important that we pray, but it's also important that we give thanks to prayer. So what the gospel teaches us today is that even when life is tough, and we all go through tough times, God is there for us. And sometimes, all we need to hear is those words, Peace, be still. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God, as we say together, We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord God, when Jesus calmed the storm, the apostles were amazed to discover that even the wind and sea would obey his word. Jesus asked why they were frightened and told them to have faith in him. Filled with faith, we come before you with our prayers, knowing that you have the answers we need. We pray for all religious leaders. May they steer the people in their care to safety and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for all fathers. May God bless and reward them for their gift of life, many acts of kindness and their loving support. For expectant fathers, especially for Lee and for his wife Sarah. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for people in local, national and international governments. May they be sensitive to their responsibilities to care for the environment and to ensure safe water supplies for their constituents. Lord, in your mercy. 
Let us pray for seafarers across the world. When they meet stormy waters, may they find a safe harbour. May those who are threatened with poor working conditions find the security which they and their families need. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for all who are infected and infected by COVID. As the numbers increase drastically, may those who are sick recover their health and may frontline workers find the support they need during these days of uncertainty. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for everyone who is faced with job insecurity as the COVID restrictions are extended. May they find answers to their questions and security of employment. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the sick, particularly for Margaret, for Isabel, for Rachel, for Phil, for Pauline and Christine. Bring your healing presence to be with all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the recently departed, particularly for Reg, for Elizabeth, for Dean, Tony and Bob. We ask you to comfort all those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us and all those whom we love know and love, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers, they shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now let us sing our hymn. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Thank you Father for making us and our wonderful world. Wherever we are in your world we should always thank you through Jesus your Son. So with angels and everyone in heaven we sing together.
great and wonderful Father. We remember when Jesus had supper with his friends the night before he died. He took bread. He thanked you, broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to his friends and said, All of you drink from this cup. Because this is my blood, the new promise of God's love. Do this every time you drink it to remember me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. So loving Father, remembering how dearly Jesus loves us, we should love him too. Send your Holy Spirit gentle as a dove on us and on these gifts, that everyone who eats and drinks this bread and wine, body and blood of Jesus, we may be full of your life and goodness. Help us to walk hand in hand with Jesus and live our lives with him. All honour and glory belong to you, Father. Through Jesus, your Son, with the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. So let us pray. O God, whose beauty is beyond our imagining and whose power we cannot comprehend, show us your glory as far as we can grasp it and shield us from knowing more than we can bear until we may look upon you without fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Now we sing our hymn.
been good to be with you again this morning and I look forward to being with you next week. Keep safe as this time goes through and uh, as the country starts to open up and I know some of that's been delayed a bit but it's important that we uh, keep one another and keep remembering hands, face, space. If there are anyone you'd like to be prayed for during this coming week, please let me know. If there's anything you need, please either email or message through Facebook. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.